What's your favorite scary movie? Um, Scream? No, no, not this Scream. Uh, original Recipe Scream from 1996. But Scream 2022? Pretty good. And by pretty good, I mean amazing. I had such, such a fun time watching this movie. It was such a delight to be back in the cinema watching a Scream movie with an audience. People screaming and shouting and cheering. I mean, it was slightly disappointing there weren't people dressed up in ghost face killer costumes and everyone's just shouting and screaming like it's the start of Scream 2 and everyone's just like... Aah! But you know what? You can't have everything in life. So Scream 2022, or Scream 5, or Five Cream, or Scream the Fifth Scream, Never Stop Screaming, whatever you want to bloody call it. So Scream is back, and this time it's playing in the meta-commentary universe of the legacy sequels. And so of course it's just called Scream, just like Halloween and so many other films now where they're just like, we're not even going to call it Scream 5 or whatever it's called. They even make a little funny joke in this where it's like, Stab, it's Stab 8, why'd you call it Stab? So they have a little bit of fun with it. And of course it's going to be called that because it's a horror comedy first, but then a meta commentary on a horror comedy second. So of course it's going to call that, even though it's a little bit annoying for titling now. Now we've got two Scream movies called Scream. But what? The original four Scream movies are incredible. Even the third one, which is easily the weakest, is still a lot of fun. And so I was a little bit trepidatious about this. This is the first movie that isn't directed by Wes Craven, horror icon, and it's not written by Kevin Williamson, who is amazing, a really great screenwriter, and he's really good at getting that meta commentary to work and not to feel like, you know, a bit deadpool or whatever. It's fine if you like Deadpool, I just don't, you know. It's just, I'm not a big fan of meta like, stuff, and I feel like Scream always nails it. It always rides that line perfectly. So. Does Scream 5 ride that line perfectly? Kind of. I mean, mostly it does. There are some lines here and there where I'm like, oh, 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 oh. but mostly it beautifully rides that line. Scream 5 is a perfect legacy sequel and it's almost a perfect Scream film. I think this film is so close to being perfect. I have one really big issue with it, but you know what, I'll get to that later. The new creative team fit into this franchise perfectly. At first I was really trepidatious. I'm like, oh, a new team, is it gonna feel a bit different? Is it gonna feel a bit too modern? And they have a lot of fun with the fact that it is now 10 years later and they have lots of references to the films in the last 10 years and the filmmaking is a bit different. You know, some of the techniques are a little different, but nothing ever feels outside of what we're used to in a screen film. This feels and breathes like a screen movie. And nothing ever feels out of place, and this film doesn't go to crazy different places to make the film feel really, really different. If anything, you know, it's very, very similar to the original first movie. And it is a true legacy sequel in that regard. Considering the type of film they're trying to make, I think they've done the best thing they can do. It works perfectly, it's funny, it's hilarious, it's scary, it's amazing. There's four things that make a screen movie a screen movie. Meta horror comedy, a fantastic opening sequence, a tight-knit group of friends, and one or two of them is the killer. And the ghost face killer is hilariously and utterly clumsy, always falling over and stumbling all over the place. Oh boy, is the ghost face killer on this film utterly clumsy and always just falling over and stumbling everywhere. As soon as this film starts, Ghostface Killers there, he's all like, ah, it's me. What's your favorite scary movie? Ah. And then he's running into someone, and someone swings the door at him, and he's like, oh, 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 oh. and he's just stumbling and tripping over himself and falling, collapsing, and just, ah. Oh. The clumsy nature of the Ghostface Killer, along with his iconic look and the knife and everything, I just love all of it. But the clumsiness of the character I find super endearing. It's one of my favorite aspects of him as a killer. The Ghostface Killer is never the same person in each film. And often in all the films, there's two of them. And they even say it in this movie, because of course they do. Uh, scream and stab. We don't have, uh, you know, a Michael Myers or a Jason Voorhees. There's not one killer. But the one thing that kind of unifies all the Ghostface Killers and makes them all feel similar to me is the clumsiness of them. And it's uh, this endearing part of the character that I absolutely love. It's such a joy to watch him run about and he's going to have to kill someone and then he slips over and he's like, Whoa! and he gets up and he's stumbling and falls over again and it's just like, it feels so human, it feels so real, but it's also very funny and silly and it just creates a different kind of tension in all the scenes than just like a... I'm coming to get you, I'm Michael Myers, I've got no character. And so there's like this really fun character aspect to the Ghostface Killer, where he's always stalking, running about, but you know, you're never sure if he's actually going to be able to get them, because he's always falling over and stumbling and stuff, and oh, he does so much stumbling in this movie, it's so much fun, I absolutely love it. Oh, how I've missed you, Ghostface Killer, and you running about and stumbling and falling, and then you kill somebody, and it's like, oh god. Scream 2022 is a legacy sequel at its heart, and it embraces that and uses all the elements of that really, really effectively. We've got our original legacy characters all coming back, we focus on a new group of characters, and most of them work really, really well, but, you know, I had the most fun, you know, like in A Force Awakens or whatever, seeing the legacy characters come back into it. And if you're sick of legacy sequels, like our Halloween's Force Awakens, Matrixes, all that stuff, this film 
Uh, it's it's here for you. It's going to mock them, have fun with it, but also play in the sandbox of a legacy sequel and see what works for those type of films. And it does a really, really good job for the most part. A couple of lines in the film feel a little cringy and stuff, but I'm sure the old films, you know, had a bit of that, but I've watched them all so many times. At this point, it's just, you know, I've just fallen in love with all those lines and I embrace them and kind of love those moments. There's a big scene in this where one of the characters just is essentially like, this is a legacy movie. That's the legacy character there. Where are all the new characters? She's pretty much being like, I'm Ray. You're Finn. You're Poe. There's Han Solo. He's right there. And they have a whole big scene. And it's a lot of fun. And there's a couple of lines where I'm like, that's, that's close to becoming too much. But it's a franchise I just love. And it's the one franchise that can be this meta. And, uh, you know, it still works for me. But that's not to say the script isn't really, really good. For like 90, 95% of the film, it's really clever, really fun, and a really exciting, uh, clever, you know, meta script. In the film, one of the characters doesn't call it a legacy sequel. She calls it a requel, which I guess is a reboot uh, sequel. I've never heard that. Uh, please comment below and let me know, is that what you call it? Because I'm like, what? A requel? She just kept saying, this is a requel. We're in a requel. I'm like, you mean a legacy sequel? Like, I didn't want to be that guy, but I almost screamed it at her. Like, it was just, it's called a legacy sequel, right? Like, what's a requel? Have, is, <laughs> Is that a new thing? Are they trying to make a new thing? So Scream has always had lots of stabbings and killings, you know, it's a slasher franchise. But for a slasher franchise, it's, uh, you know, done a lot more with spooks and scares and building out the tension rather than, you know, like your later Saw film, gore fest and all that kind of stuff. Whereas this film is an interesting, like, in-between. Like, it's not as disgusting and gruesome and violent as, you know, your later Saw films or your hostels or, you know, your torture porn kind of stuff. But it's a lot more violent and gory than any of the other Scream films. Like, some of the stabbings in this are brutal, like through the faces, through the necks, and just, oh my god, throats being slit, and just, at one point, someone just gets stabbed like a hundred times, and it's, it's a lot to handle, like there are times in the cinema where I'm just sitting there being like, oh my god, like, whoa, Jesus, that is violent, bloody as hell, it's easily the bloodiest scream film, but it's never too bloody, where you're like, ah, oh, this is too much, you've taken scream too far, it's, this film does such a great balancing act with almost every element, and the gore is like one of them. It's a perfect balancing act of like, not too gory, but you know, not the same stuff we've seen. But it's still pretty extreme and shocking to see. I was like, whoa, I'm shocked. So this film's structure is the exact same as The Force Awakens, which is kind of surprising and weird. It was such a weird thing to like notice as I was watching, but also I guess not, because that's a legacy sequel as well. But this film is identical to that movie in its structure. It's so weird. If you got the scripts for Scream, Original Recipe Scream, and Scream 2022, and put them like together with similarities and all that stuff, and then you got uh, uh, Star Wars, Original Recipe Star Wars, and then The Force Awakens, and all the similarities and you know differences and stuff, put them there. It's the same. Both films start with the exact same opening scene, but there's like a tiny little riff on it, and then the middle chunk of the movie is like, you know, it's the most different of the film, but still, you know, pretty similar. And then at the end of the second act, the old, gruff, legacy character dies. And that bit's like, oh, you can handle that better. And then the third act is just the same as the third act of the original, with, you know, little tweaks. It's, it's really weird. Is this part of the meta joke of the whole legacy thing, where they're like, oh, legacies, it's all, they run out of ideas. But, you know, in this film it really, really works because so many of these films are so meta that this film being like this meta where, you know, the first scene is just the same as the original opening scene, but, you know, it's really good. And then the final scene is just like, we're back at the house. We're back at that original house. Oh, no, it's all coming full circle. But it did kind of feel like it was coming full circle. And it really, really worked for the most part. But it's just kind of fascinating how it, you know, its structure is just so similar to Force Awakens. It's just so similar. So I absolutely love this film, I really really do, but I have two pretty big issues. Well one small issue and one huge issue. And because of course they are, they're the same two issues I had when I first watched Force Awakens. We get Han Solo, but he dies, and it's signposted and obvious, and you know, a really clumsy death, and because of that, we never get the three legacy characters all together on screen together. And in Scream 2022, it's the same thing. We never get Dewey, Gale, or Sydney all together on screen again. And, you know, that's my tiny little issue. That's fine, that's fine. Who cares in the end? Just a little nitpick. But my big issue, and it's not that the fact that they killed Dewey, it's how they killed Dewey. It is a really bad scene. I would argue it's the only bad scene in the whole movie. The rest of the film is really, really, really good. Like, surprisingly good. I'm so surprised at how good this film is, except for this moment where they decided to kill Dewey. And not because they decided to kill him, I expected him to die, but how they did it, I just thought was terrible. 
So Dewey, he's gruff, he's rough, he's old, he's looking amazing, and it's just so good to see the character back. Like, oh, there was one bit where he's like, I'm not coming back into the fold, I'm not going to help out. And then there's this moment where he appears again, and he's like, I'm coming back into the fight. And he's just walking up, and the music, his classic music, do 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 dun 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 bow 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 ding 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 and he's just walking it's like ding 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 oh just oh goosebumps it reminded me of another film with superheroes in it uh, recently you know the one and Dewey is so amazing in this film he's so funny he's so gruff and old and he's like oh I'm grizzled and old it was just glorious to see him and I had a feeling he was gonna get Han Solo because of all the three legacy characters you're not going to kill Sydney. I just don't think you're going to kill, uh, you know, Friends Lady, uh, what's her face? Gal Weathers. So it's Dewey. You're going to kill Dewey. If you're killing anyone, and you should probably kill someone, you know, to raise the stakes. They even say that later in the film. We kill Dewey to raise the stakes to be like, oh shit, the stakes have been raised. And you know, it works on that level. And I think killing him, you know, I'm very sad. I'm very, very sad about it. But that's not the issue with it. The issue is how they did it. It was so bad. Like, they're all fighting, they're all doing their thing, Dewey comes to rescue, and he's like, bang, 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 and he just shoots Ghostface, and he's just there, and you're like, oh, he's dead, oh, and we're at that point in the film where I'm like, oh my god, this is how they're going to subvert our expectations, this is how they're going to raise the stakes, they're going to, he's like there, and he's just like dead, like up on the wall, glasses everywhere, and I'm like, oh my god, he's going to unmask him, because that's a big issue in all these horror films, and in the other screen films sometimes, where, you know, they just don't... They don't unmask him. He's like there unconscious or something. They're like, could just take the mask off and see who it is. But instead they're like, oh, 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 oh. or they run away or do all stupid stuff. But he's old and grizzled and he's, you know, he's been through this four times. So he's not going to make that type of mistake now. So I expected him to take the mask off, shoot the guy in the head. And then as they're leaving, they're like, I saved the day. A second ghost face killer. So maybe there'd be three this time. And this second ghost face killer would come out and there'd be a struggle. Someone would get stabbed. Dewey would get in the way and then it'd be a big struggle. He'd stab them back and then he would die heroically, amazingly, you know, and not like an idiot. In this film, he shot him. The person's clearly going to die. All you need to do is shoot him in the head and take the mask off. But no, 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 no. The writers were suddenly like, hey, you've really enjoyed this screenplay. You think this film's amazing. I'm like, I do. I think this is amazing. Well, how about we just go and take a giant shit on your head, Jax? Because... Fuck you! And fuck your favourite character, Dewey! We're gonna ruin this... Honestly, it doesn't ruin the movie, but it took me like 15 minutes after this happened. Like, if I wasn't in a cinema, I would have paused it and I would have been like, I'm coming back to this later, I'm gonna have a beer. Like, fuck this. Like, it was just... I do not understand. And so, what happens is he leaves, and he's just like, I'll just leave the ghost face killer there, it's fine. And then, as the elevator's calling, he's like, no. No, I've got to shoot him in the head. They never die unless you shoot them in the head. Yeah, you know that. Why'd you take this time? And then they're like, no, 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 don't go. And the elevator doors are closing. And he's like, I've got to do this. As soon as he's there, I just looked at my mate. I'm like, he's dead. I can't believe this. And just the whole scene, all the dramatic tension, it's gone. There's, it's, and it's just walking. It's slow-mo, it's dramatic. He un all the bullets come out of his gun. He puts more bullets in. It's all dramatic. And I'm just like, there's no tension now. He's clearly going to die. You haven't done this well. You haven't done this cleverly. It's obviously signposted. It's so obvious what's going to happen. This is just bad. Bad filmmaking, bad writing, bad direction. I don't know what happened. This film has been so, so good. You remade the original scene. The most iconic opening scene to any horror film. The original Scream movie. And it's so good. It's such a good revamp, re-edition, legacy version of that scene. And the rest of the movie is so good. What happened here? What happened here? Why is it so bad and so dumb? And he's like, I'm going to shoot you, Ghostface Killer, in the head. And then Ghostface Killer's like, ah, actually, no surprise. I'm awake. Bang. Stabs him. Stabs him. Double stabs. Two blades. And, he's, and then this Ghostface Killer's like, it's a pleasure killing you, or whatever the hell. And he's like, ah! That's all. It's disgustingly bloody. Cuts him all the way up. But it's just like... You can do that. Kill him like that. Kill him horrifically and gory and whatever. I, but just don't make it so stupid. Like, oh my god. It's just... You can devise a way to not make it dumb and stupid where he hasn't learned anything. He's been in this situation four times. As he says, he's been stabbed like nine times or whatever. It just... I don't know. It just really, really, really frustrated me. I don't understand why they had to kill him so badly. Why couldn't they just make it good? Just make it good. Like, that's all I'm asking. You can kill him. That's not my issue. It's just... Oh boy, it's just so dumb and frustrating, like, and it's not even like, I'm like, well, he's the hero, he needs to die a hero, it's like, I don't know, he was just so stupid, I was like, he's past that as a character, and he wasn't presented as being old and, like, withered and not with it anymore, like, he still was sharp, he was just kind of burnt out and stuff, I just, there's just different ways to do this, and I just, like, I don't know, even if you just wanted to kill him, shock and, you know, 
you just have someone jump out and just stab him, and he just he just can't shoot them quick enough, or he shoots them twice, and later you know that comes into it. So I just, just really really disappointing, and you know just like Han Solo, just super obvious, not very good, and uh, yeah, threw me out of the film for like fifteen minutes, and I was just like, oh. And the only good aspect of it is Sydney Prescott's like, I'm not coming into Woodsboro, and you're like, oh, I know you are, so don't say that. And they're like, okay, no, that works. She only comes because Dewey died. But then, you know, we never get all three of them together, but whatever. But then, you know, the rest of the film, Sydney and Gail, they team up, and that is really, really awesome. So Gail Weathers and Sydney are back. They're back together, teaming up, and there's some really, really great moments. There's someone that comes out of the house, and she's like, oh, I've been shot, and, you know, you know she's because at this point. She's like, I've been shot, oh, no. And they're like, mm, do we buy this? Nah. Bang, bang, bang. And it's like, you know, there's a really great little moments like that. But uh, Sydney uh, Prescott is barely in this movie. Uh, it's kind of surprising. Like, they kind of pulled, like, a half Luke Skywalker in this situation, where they're like, at least they put her in it at the end, because of course they did. But it's surprising how much they focused on the new cast. And for the most part, they did a really good job. I don't think the group clicks and gels the same way a lot of the other uh, groups do in the other movies. But this one, it, it worked well enough. There's some great little funny bits. There's a lot of tension between all of them, because almost immediately, they all get together. And they're all like, this is a bloody legacy film. The ghost face killer, he's back. And oh no, it's legacy characters. And we're, we're the new characters. And all this stuff. And they immediately, like, it's always someone you know. Dewey says that, like, straight away. Straight off the bat, his first thing he says is, it's always someone you know, and it's probably the boyfriend. Which it turns out to be, so Dewey on the money again. At least he's smart in that scene. Like, oh, God. But so there's a lot of really, really fun tension between all the characters all being like, I think you're the killer. No, I think you're the killer. In particular, two scenes really stand out to me. There's one where a guy's, like, making out with his girlfriend, she's like, let's go upstairs and be all private. And he's like, ha, 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 absolutely not. There's lots of people around this party. I'm going to stay here where it's chill. I'm not going up there with you, my girlfriend who could be the killer, and she's like, how dare you, and runs off, and that's very funny. Love that scene. There's another really great scene in the third act, when it's the big party, you know, it's, it's the same as the first movie, there's a big party, and it's the third act, and they go down to the basement, you're like, oh my god, her best friend died in the basement, someone's gonna die in the basement getting beers, like, this is really tense, and then one's like, why'd you go down here alone? You should you should have asked me to come down here, and then she's like, bah, bah, bah. and they go back and forth on why each other could be the killers, it's so tense. The whole time I'm like, oh my god, one of the... And then at one point she's like, because I am the killer. And I'm like, <gasps> such an early reveal. And then she's like, is what I could say if I was the killer. And then she's like, but what if you still are the killer? And she's like, hmm, hmm. Incredibly tense. Amazing scene. And it turns out one of them was the killer, but didn't reveal it then. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. There's a lot of really great little exchanges in this film. It's... It's just a delight, and potentially the best scene of just tension, just racking up the tension, but also having really great little laughs and moments of relief, and then the shock, horrible, like, death with a completely brutal murder, is the, 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 the cop, the cop from Scream, uh, Scream 4, she's, like, driving, and the ghost killer killers are like, I'm, I'm gonna kill your son, she's like, oh no, and she's driving home, and she's trying to get home to her son, and, you know, you're just waiting, you're like, oh no, the son's dead, the son's dead, the son's dead. And then she's running up the steps and you're like, oh, we haven't seen the sun for a bit. He's totally dead. Then the ghost face just appears and stabs her and she dies. And it's just like, oh, no. And she's dead. It's awful. It's horrible. And it's really shocking. And then we just cut to the guy, her son. She get, He gets out of the shower. And there's just this montage of him getting all this like, stuff for the sushi ready, which is really sad and tragic because she's dead outside. But also you're like, where's the ghost face killer? Is it going to be a double kill? And then like, there's all this open space. And every time he just like, opens a door blocking the open space and you're like, oh, he's going to be behind there, he's going to be behind there, he's going to be behind there. Oh, no. Okay. No. And that happens like a million times and each time it's just, oh, it's just so exciting. It's so, like, the tension in the cinema and then those little laughs where every time he closed the door, he wasn't there. And then finally, when the ghost face killer's there, he stabs him in the mouth. It was just like, oh, it was just electric in the cinema. And so you know, like, a scene is working. And, I mean, I knew it because I'm watching I'm like, this is just... Oh, the tension was just amazing. The filmmaking in this was really, really, really good for almost the whole film. Another little weird thing is uh, we've got the two main characters who are sisters, and uh, one of them is the illegitimate daughter to Billy Loomis, uh, <laughs> original killer from the original movie, and uh, he kind of haunts her like a ghost, and he's always like, you could be a serial killer like me, oh, you've got a dark passenger within you, and I'm like, that's... <laughs> Been watching a lot of this uh, kind of similar kind of thing recently uh, with Dexter. This is this is weird. <laughs> just weird timing. It just I don't know. Uh, it was fun to see the actor back. It was really fun to see him back at first. But over the film, I'm like, oh, I see that it's kind of be like a red herring. Like, is she gonna be a serial killer too? But I never really thought that was gonna be how it was gonna go because it's like a legacy film. So she's clearly the new Sydney Prescott. So I just think that was gonna be a weird twist. Uh, they said right at the start that like it's just gonna be your your boyfriend. 
because it's Billy Loomis again. And I'm like, I feel like that's what it's going to be, uh, which it turned out to be. But the way they subverted it until that moment where they just made you think it's not going to be him was really, really clever writing. But yeah, her ghost, uh, Billy Loomis, just a little bit weird. There was one moment right at the end where she's like crawling and she's like, I can't escape. I'm going to die. And then he's like in a mirror. He's like, mm -hmm, right down, <laughs> down there, there's a knife down there. <laughs> it's just kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. And so, screen movies, they're all about the mystery. Who is it? Which of the friends is it? And in this film, I was kind of guessing for a little bit, and then I was kind of like, oh, I kind of want to let, the, you know, the, the surprises and the fun of the final reveals, you know, just wash over me and, like, you know, I just want to be on board with the film. So I kind of stopped guessing. But as soon as we were introduced to all the friends straight away, one of them was, like, super kind of creepy looking, like, no offense to her, but there was just something about her, and I'm like, oh, she seems off and sus. And it was her. She was the killer. And when she goes all crazy, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I felt like I got that from her at the start. So I don't know if that was intentional. Every character gets like a little moment where you're like, oh, maybe it's them. But her right off the bat, I'm like, she's in sus. Uh, but the character that should be, you know, your first suspect, the new Billy Loomis, the boyfriend, uh, Jack Quaid from The Boys, his surprise reveal of being one of the killers was just heartbreaking. He even says as he's stabbing his girlfriend, he's like, I know, it's, su it's super sad and, like, tragic that it's me. And I'm like, it is! That's sad, dude! I'm sad you're evil! That sucks, dude! I liked you! And the really clever writing throughout the film to kind of make us think it's not him. And I think one of the aspects that really does that is he's kind of like, he's like, oh, right in the first scene, he's like, I, don't, I haven't even watched a stab movie. You're like, what do you mean you haven't watched a stab movie? crazy idiot and then throughout the film he's watching all the stab movies there's this amazing bit where he's like watching a youtube video about someone like trashing on screen uh stab eight because they're like stab eight's terrible and you say ghost space killer he's got like a flamethrower or something and it's like yeah man this film is this film is terrible it's a, and yeah i don't know that's just a really fun way to be like yeah well it's not gonna be him because he's learning about all this and i don't know it was a little cheeky little uh, red herring to trick the audience and it tricked me but I think just the performance, he's really endearing, funny, charming. I really, really liked him. So when it turned out that he was evil, I'm like, no, no, not Jack Quaid from The Boys. Oh, that, that sucks, dude. But his turn, when he's all like evil, he's like, I'm monologuing now. And it's the final act and I'm monologuing. It's, you know, I had a lot of fun with it. It's really silly and over the top. But I think something that all the screen films, except for the first one, suffer from is that once the mystery plays out, because the mystery is so exciting, like, who is it? It could be this person, and everyone's got motives and all this thing. And then once it's fully revealed and all two characters, except for the third one, which only just has one, because whatever. It's a, it's a bit weird. I like it, but it's a bit weird. And so once it's all out in the open, and the two killers are standing there, and they're monologuing, and they're like, this is why we did it, because of meta films, film, and old film stuff, horrors, horror, and war. You know, just, they're saying lots of words about film and horror and you know it's all very meta and stuff and they're trying to bring back cinema and Hollywood and whatever the hell he's saying it's fine but compared to the first movie like that that moment where Billy and Stu are both like it's us it's me it's me it's fucking Shaggy from Scooby-Doo <laughs> he's like doing the tongue thing or whatever terrifying and then they're stabbing each other and they're slowly getting wider and more pale and just it's such an intense intense moment and that moment where Billy's like actually I had motive I'm actually a psycho blah 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 all these things and it's just like what the hell's going on man oh I think I'm bleeding out man that final act of that movie I mean that movie is perfect it's a, it's a masterpiece of cinema and I think that's just the one aspect of all the sequels not just this one kind of suffer from that third act last part of that third act where they're just monologuing and you know the mystery's gone and they're all just you know it just it doesn't work as well anymore and this film kind of suffers from that as well it's just a lot of like Oh, we're going to save Hollywood. It's, it's all about killings and basing things on real events or whatever. It's like, sure, whatever, man. Um, the performances are great. The actions are good fun. They're all running about, stabbing each other. Uh, and once again, like every uh, Scream movie, and it's not as effective. In the first one, it's really effective. But it comes back and like, oh, God. And this one is very funny and silly. But uh, they actually burn one of the one of the killers. Just horrifically burn her like it's once upon a time in Hollywood. And she's just like, ah! And then she comes back, running back for the, I'm the, not a zombie, I'm back. Uh, she's all burnt up and they just kill her. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. This film is just an absolute, it's just, it's a blast to watch. It's scary. It's terrifying. It's funny. It's tense. It's, it's beautiful. It's just, it's great to be back in the screen universe. I had so much fun with it. Does it do anything new and crazy and break the boundaries of like the slash of meta commentary? No, of course it doesn't. But it does exactly what it should do. It embraces its legacy sequel title. Scream! It's just Scream! Scream 2022! And it does everything it needs to do in that kind of realm of a movie that it is. 
And, you know, it's just, it's just a good time, man. And so, what better way to end talking about uh, Scream 2022 than talking about the opening scene, which I forgot to talk about earlier. But it starts, and we get, like, a, a you know, a riff, a revamped version of the Drew Barrymore. Iconic. Amazing. One of my, I think it's the best opening to any horror film. Maybe any film. It's just so good. And this film does a really fun subversion of it. It slowly twists and plays with the ideas of what we're expecting. There's some really great tension. The actor is spectacular she's so good every time she screams and jumps to the phone and just the tension in her voice just amazing stuff and then it does this and then you know the ghost face killer comes he's like stab 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 and it's like scream and you're like whoa but then almost immediately we find out she didn't die she survived and I think that's a really fun clever way to subvert our expectations she's a main character in the film and then you know it's her and her sister as the main two characters and then like later in the film her sister's like maybe you are the killer, like, well, how'd you survive? And all these kind of things play into your mind. You're like, yeah, wait, no one ever survives. Why did she survive? And all these kind of things, really, really great. I just absolutely loved it. It's just so good. The fact that they can, you know, pretty much do a repeat of that, you know, scene, and it works, and I was just so in after that moment. Just so in. It's so exciting. It shows you how clever the writing is, how on point the direction is, how much they understood what type of film they needed to make. Because the opening of Scream, but she's on the phone and it builds up and builds up and then that kill is just shocking and intense. There's a really great fun play on the like, what's your favorite scary movie? And instead of quizzing her on, you know, all these other franchise films, he's quizzing her on Stab and that's really fun and that's a really great way to play on it. And it's just great. I mean, it's so great to now have Scream 1, Scream 2, Scream 4 and Scream 5 with perfect, incredible opening sequences. Scream 3 has such a weird just nothing scene where it's just that guy and he's just like, I'm gonna save my girlfriend. It's just, it's just, it's a scene. It's just a normal scene in the movie. Whereas the others are big, incredible, crazy scenes. And I just love them all so much. It's such a great franchise with such great opening scenes. And I love Ghostface Killer. It was so good to see him clumsily stumble everywhere. It was so great to see Dewey come back, pull a Han Solo. It just, uh, pretty much this film is perfect. I love every single aspect of this film, except for the three minutes and how they tried to kill Dewey. You totally killed Dewey, it's fine. But how they did it, absolutely no. Terrible filmmaking. It felt like a different director was filming that scene. It felt like someone from Stab was filming that scene. And it was like a parody of Dewey. But whatever, whatever. Honestly, this film's fantastic. I can't wait to go out to the cinema and see it again. So what does everyone else think of Scream 2022, Scream 5, 5 Cream, Scream the 5th Scream, Never Stop Screaming, or whatever you want to call it. What do you all think? Did you love it as much as me? Did you love its meta commentary on the legacy sequels? Bloody comment below. Tell me what your thoughts are. Big yays, big nays. I'd love to know what everyone thinks about this movie. And uh, my last thought on this is that I want this to be the last screen. This feels like a perfect, you know, close to the franchise, you know. Because I feel like with these five films, we're done. I feel like we've done an arc. We've kind of done it all. We've done everything we need to do with this franchise. I've seen enough. Is that because Dewey's dead and I don't want to see another film without Dewey? Probably.